everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make what I'm calling a lift and reveal box. So you have the little fastening on the front, you just open that, and as you lift it, it will reveal the gift. And you can see how it looks on the side there. It's like this hinge. It's very easy to make, don't be put off. And then I've got the ribbon there, which is just tied from underneath to hold your gift in place. You could also use some strong glue dots, but you, if you're having something heavier, which these lip glosses are, then the ribbon is a good you know, idea. If you could put a gift card in here quite easily. And yes, it does hold two of the Tonics tea cakes as well, if you would like to pop them in there. I've got this lovely little gift tag here as well, which I'll be tying onto them so I can write a little message and the to and from and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, let's get into it and I'll show you how to make it. Okay, so the inspiration for today's box has come from this picture that I've had for ages on my phone. I actually saw this on an online shopping store when I was living in China. And this one's from creativepackagingmadeinchina.com. And I think I've done pretty well getting a good match to that. So I'm doing a Christmas version today and I'm using the Almost Christmas papers. And that's what I've used for this gorgeous kind of holly sparkle paper there and then I've used the gingham on the side and I'm doing exactly the same again with this one because I love them so much and they're going to be going to two separate people anyway or two different people so that's the paper pad as always everything will be linked below and then you've got these three pieces of cardstock here so for the main box you will need a piece of nine and a half by 12 inch cardstock so this will just make a nice gift box this is an this piece is stuck onto the lid so you know you might just want this nice size box then this is what you would need to make that so along the 12 inch side you want to score at one inch three and a half six eight and a half and eleven then along the nine and a half inch side you want to score at two and a half and seven Okay, so that's all the scoring on that piece. Then this is for that pop-out piece. So this is for the, all of this here. So this piece here measures just under five inches. So it's not five and seven eighths, it's just in between. If I bring it up here on the scoreboard. So can you see it's not quite on the five and it's not quite on the four and seven eighths. It's just in between this notch here. Okay, so just a little bit shorter than five. And the only reason for that is so that it will slide inside this piece. You see, this is slightly shorter than that section, so it slides in nicely. And then the length is nine and three eighths. Okay, so along the nine and three eighths, you just want to score it two and a half and at six and seven eighths. We're bringing this piece in just ever so slightly, just so it does all fold in. And then along that side, that's just slightly under the five inches, you just want to score it two and a half. Now you'll have this whole section which is two and a half because you've just scored there. This piece is just under two and a half because obviously the cardstock is. Just mark base on that side, okay? So you'll see if I bring up, so you can see all the score lines in this bit here, this is the base. And what that means is it's, it's this piece. It's this bit here that your present will sit on, all right? So just mark now base while you've got it in that orientation. So we know that we've got our whole two and a half inch piece there, which is gonna to stick to the back of the lid. This piece is just slightly shorter than two and a half, so it will slide inside. And then I've got this little bit here, which is just to reinforce, and this is two and three eighths of an inch by four and a quarter. And it's actually going to be stuck on top of here, okay? So that's all of the cardstock that you need. Now you can fold and burnish all of the score lines. Okay, so we'll just stick with this bit for the moment. What you want to do is just cut down along the short side, cut down that score line just to the first score line, like so. And again, do the same on the other side. And then turn it over so you've got that facing away from you, but you know that that's the base that's going to be on the bottom. You're then going to bring up the sides like this. Okay, now you want to stick that together. Now don't worry if the squares kind of don't perfectly line up because obviously one is slightly shorter. So see I've got a little bit of an overhang but you're going to be cutting this all away in a moment. But as long as that one where you've wrote base is always on the bottom then you know that you're, you're doing everything correctly. So another thing that might be worth doing before we stick the side bits down actually is because you want to add your hole punches. So you will need to cut, I've cut one of these slightly shorter, yeah, this one here. So this is going to mat this one here. And this is two and a quarter by four and one eighth. 
and this one here is going to decorate this bottom section of the one where you've wrote base on. So I'm just going to stick that one down because it's best to do the hole punch whilst it's all flat and we want to add this decorative paper on and then put it all together. So I'm just going to stick that one there and then I've also then got another piece this is now, an, you know, an, I say a normal size, but this is two and a quarter by four and a quarter. And that's the size of the mats for the rest of it, but I'll talk about that in a moment. But then this piece will then decorate the, the back, just like so. so. I'm going to trim that a little bit. It's a bit too long, I think. That's better. So, actually, I think... I'd actually do four and one eighth again, I guess. I don't know why I made that a bit bigger because it's all the same, isn't it? So yeah, four and one eighth. Okay, so you can see I've just put glue on there, but I forgot to do the hole punching, which is the whole point of doing this. So I'm actually going to use this to do my hole punches because I need to get in further. So I'm just going to go through the middle of this and it's quite good because I've got that gingham paper I can kind of line up. So I'm going to do one there and one just about there. So you can see where I've just done my holes. Okay, now you could just use a pokey tool. If you're using some baker's twine, it's quite thin, but um, this is really handy if you want to kind of hole punch in a larger surface area. This one here will only go in so far, but everybody's got something different, so work with what you have, and if you don't have something, then use a pokey tool and just poke a hole through there. Okay, then you want to add your glue. You can see I've started to put mine on there already, and I'm going to bring this one up and then just stick that one down. And again, I've got my glue on there. I'm actually going to add a little bit more because I think that's dry. Now, to get the shape, so again, this is make sure this is your base piece. You'll want to rub that out because you you would see it, I guess, if someone's going to lift it up. Now, if you're not confident to be able to cut a curved shape, use your tape. See there? And just draw around that with a pencil line. Make sure you get it from point to point. Draw around that and then cut that curve. But you don't have to have a curved shape. You can just cut across from corner to corner. Okay, but I am going to cut a nice curve into this, so I'm just going to, like so, just eyeball it, like so. Okay, and then again on this side. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Then you've got your reinforcement as well, which I forgot to add. I'm just going to stick that underneath there. It doesn't matter what side you add it on, and I'll just repunch my holes. But this, I guess, if you're just putting something maybe a bit heavier in then this would be a handy thing to have. If if you're not, the Kalau glue is strong enough on its own. In fact, I don't need to worry about rubbing out now that um, writing, but that will just cover that space perfectly. And once this dries, um, it will be nice and uh, hard. And I've just realized I'm not gonna be able to punch that hole. So <laughs> make sure you do it in the, um, the correct order. So I'm just gonna peel this off at least you can see what to do if you make a mistake. <laughs> it's all easy things to correct and then I'm just going to punch it. And now I can just stick that one back over here. There we go. Once the ribbon goes through that, that will hold your gift in place. Okay, so that's what you want to do there. Okay, so now you want this piece here and you'll have two one inch sections at either end. So pick an end, it really doesn't matter what one. But first of all, you're going to just cut down these two score lines here like so and then just take just a small just a smidge these are actually going to be reinforcements just on the top of the the gift box just to give it a little bit of strength so you just want to take a little bit off all of those sides like so then pop it on its side like this and you're going to cut down all of these score lines to the first score line. And then when you get to here, you've got that one inch section. You want to just remove all of that. So come down from there, cut past that first score line and all the way down. This is going to be your lid, so make sure it's nice and neat, like so. I just hold that there so you cut down along that side you just cut down to the first score line bring it along here you're starting you know you obviously you're not cutting that one away you're starting 
from this one here and just cutting down. When you get to this one you're removing all of that corner. I'll then do it on this side, so this time you're going to come down so you've got your, your one inch and then you've got this one. You want to come down to the second score line I guess in that case. Cut up and remove all of that section. You see that's our lid to the box, okay? And then again, just work down here. You just want to cut the two now because you've already, re you know, removed that one. So just cut down that one and that one. Don't cut that one away, otherwise you'll cut all of the, that corner off. So it's a bit of an unusual one, but that's what I worked out was that the best way to do it from one piece of cardstock, really, as well. So. What's going to happen, you want this piece facing away from you. This is going to be the last piece you fold down. So you want to bring up, this is your middle, this is your base. Then I would bring up that one and you're going to stick it to there. And then bring up this one and that's going to wrap around the front. And then these are going to fold in to kind of conceal all that but also reinforce it. So you can see the little box that you get there. If you do just want to make this as a box, I would try and leave where you've cut these bits away. What I would do is try and kind of cut down here, but leave like half an inch or something attached to this side bit so that you can slide those bits inside here. So the middle one here, I'm going to add my glue onto the side. And I'm going to bring that one up and around and just line it up. Make sure the bottom's nice and flush. If you want to maybe cut little bits off the side, you could, I guess, just to tidy it up. But I think I think we'll be okay with this. And this is all adding strength because this is obviously reinforcing each side the more that you know you're sticking on top each time. And then I'm going to now add glue to this side. I'm going to do this one at the same time, and then just wrap those around. You should get a really nice finish. If you do have anything overhanging, see I've got a little bit there, I'm just going to cut underneath with my scissors and just remove that. And then if you just fold these pieces out, if you put glue on these, and just fold each one in. And I just use my bone folder and just go inside there and just spread that glue out and make sure that they stick down. Then you're going to stick the back of this piece, so where you've cut your holes, remember that's your base, the back bit is going to go onto the, the lid of the box and it will be just slightly smaller. You should have a tiny little lip that you can feel on each side. So I'm going to add the glue onto here. Now make sure that you're straight when you put this on the lid and just test it as you're wiggling it, wiggling, wiggling it around that you can close it. You should get a really nice closure. Can you hear it just kind of gliding in? So just spend a minute just making sure that you're happy. And make sure that that closes. Like I said, you should have a little overhang on each side. I'm going to keep it down this way. It reminds me of one of those little kind of like storage boxes. Um, my, my auntie, I think, had one and you would lift this lid up and then you'd have a storage box there as well. So I think I might do something like that for, I think I might evolve this. I've got an idea already now of what I, what I want to do. So now I'm going to pop all the mats and layers down. So these are all two and a quarter by four and a quarter. I've got two different designs. I've got the gingham and again this holly. So I'm going to pop that one there. I've got this one to go on the back and then I've cut two pieces which are two and a quarter squared to go on each side and then I've got another piece to go on the lid there as well. I've also cut these two pieces which are four and a quarter by three quarters and I've just rounded off the corners and they are going to go on each side of this closure. So I'm just going to pop my corner punch there and now that will all line up. So I'm just going to go and get all of this stuck down. Okay, so I've stuck all that down and I'm just using some of my, these are, I think these are 10 mil. They're only dinky ones, but they're enough to hold it in place. You might want to pop a hole through there and maybe one through here and have it so it ties. It's entirely up to you. 
that one there and then just close that one up and then just lift that up carefully and just push them both down so they're nice and secure and then I'm going to add that lovely big bow so I've got two strips here one of them is so this is the Dovecraft double sided glitter card it's beautiful and it's non shared so I've used the whole length which was eight and a quarter by one and then this is six by one and I've done these before on my channel and you just basically just curl the edges I'm just going to do it with my hands and just run a bead of glue and just kind of join it together so you've got a ring so you're kind of making a paper paper chain at the minute and do the same with this one okay and then where the join is on the bottom there I'm just going to run a bead of glue and just bring that down into the middle you can see already you start to get that both bow, bow effect oh, and again do the same with this one so just run your glue just along the join there now make sure you get it right in the middle and then again put some glue through the middle there and stick that into the middle of that piece so you have this effect you can kind of just shape it, give it even more dimension, like so. Okay, so you can see we've got that pretty bow. And then I've just got some red mirrored card, and I'm just going to cut about a quarter of an inch strip, like so. And starting from underneath, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue and attach that bit there. Then I'm going to pop glue along there, only a thin amount because when you squeeze this down you don't want it all coming out so just bring that one around. Okay and then just pop another little bit of glue under there, bring that around and then you can just trim off any excess. Okay so there we have our bow and then I'm going to pop some more glue just in the middle there. Open up your box, put your hand underneath so you can push down on the bow and just line it up in the middle and just squeeze that glue. So the hot glue works best for this because it's quite a, you know, the cardstock's thick and the glitter and everything but if you don't have that and you've got a gel glue then you could use that, you just have to hold it there for a little bit longer. But now we've got that gorgeous bow on the top and then I've got the sentiments here I'm using these a lot so I'm going to use the gold open up the bottom there and just sit that right in the middle I've added the glue I just I never trust the stickers or the stickiness that they you know these self-adhesive kind of things come with so I always like to add my own glue I'm just gonna leave that there for a second I'm going to thread this through underneath there I've probably cut way too much and again through there and then I'm just going to imagine the kind of size that I well I know what's going in here but I don't want to show it so I'm just going to tie this off like so and I'll just give myself a nice big bow so I've got plenty there but I'm just showing you kind of how you would do this and then I'm just going to cut away those scissors are not good for cutting the ribbon, so let's just tidy that up. There we go. And there. So it's a big bow at the moment, but it gives me plenty of the ribbon there to wrap around my gift. And then I'm just going to feed this through. I think these tags are from Lawn Fawn. I've had them for about three years. And they're just really cute. But now I will tie that around underneath there so I can write on the tag but there is the finished gift box. Okay, so there you have two very cute lift and reveal gift boxes. I'll show you this one again with the gifts in so you can see exactly how it will look. I think it's a really nice surprise. I don't think people will expect it, you know, when they open these. And again, you can imagine that one once I've tied the gifts in there. But it's, yeah, 
super pleased with this. I'm definitely going to be working on some larger sizes and um, even something maybe a little bit smaller as well. I think it's um, adorable. So thank you for watching. I'll link as much as I can in the video description below and I'll be back in very soon with more tutorials. Bye!